Super. 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 Welcome everyone to week two of several weeks of uh, Numenera on the Super BS Gamescast. Before we get started and reintroduce our players and recap last week's uh, meanderings through the ninth world, do a couple little quick um, house vacuuming items, Mm. as uh, Brank loves to call them. Um, May he rest in peace. Pieces, technically. Pieces. Yeah. May he rest in peace. Um, and uh, yeah, so in the vacuum things. cleaner, right? We are uh, in the vacuum cleaner. The vacuum yes, cleaner, right? um, we are one week away from E3, so get ready for the unveiling of Croc Reborn. Uh, we're calling it here first on Super BS Gamescast, the number one Croc themed video game podcast uh, on the West Coast did of we, the did world. Did we vote on that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. I well, you don't that. you don't vote on being the number one. You just you it's turn just, around. You look at the work that you've oh, done. It just happens. And yeah. all the things you've accomplished for Croc mm-hmm. and his gobos. And you realize you're number one when the world votes you that way. OK, so, it's like math, Dave. Yeah, adds up, this, is adds little, up. <laughs> I, this is a work of goodwill. I know that's kind of above you since you're a member of the law. It's actually beneath me. Uh, it's but, beneath you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm really excited for the the new platformer that's coming out in that franchise, the the Turk Rock Dinosaur Hunter. <laughs> yes, it, it, I thought it was Turd Rock. Tur- Turd Rock? Is that no, it? no, it's like a Silent D. And Turk there's, Rock. There's is actually what it is. a music spinoff called Croc Band. Yeah, you Croc Band is coming out too. Yeah, this is the so 2018 good. is the year of the Croc. Um, mm-hmm. That's that goes back to Egyptian zodiacs. That's pre. It's antediluvian, pre uh, Old Testament flood. I mean, that's like. Yeah. Hieroglyphics everywhere. Croc is what you see. Everyone knows that. Um, yeah. Crocodiles have been around way longer than Spyro the Dragon, which is bullshit, <laughs> as is our official stance. Um, I feel Thank really... you for your votes. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to kick back into our continuing saga of the Cult of the Vortex in the Ninth World. Um, a little recap last week. Um, we... Uh, Awoke from our camping festivities days away from the town that we had saved uh, by solving their fishing lake monster problem. And we were so tired that we uh, low energetically went through this uh, temple that this cult inhabits. It turned out to be a fairly weird but harmless cult. However, they do kidnap people regularly. And we were met outside of the entrance to this place. Pretty by, harmless. Pretty harmless. <laughs> non violently kidnapped. They, I think that's more like. You know, they lured him with candy. What do you what do you yeah. call nice kidnapping? <laughs> uh, coercion. Yeah, um, and they sort of like they seem to hope some type of Stockholm syndrome takes over. Anyway, we meet an escapee who is asking us to go back in and rescue her brother. The guys go in, and as they um, as they kind of learn the dealings, disguise themselves as inductees, people interested in joining the cults. Um, they come up with this idea to replace the leadership of the cult. And that's where we're going to kick off. So let's do a quick little reminder of who our team players are here. Starting with, on the right, we got um, Evil Vicious Lawyer by Day, uh, Heartless, just real... uh, I I think they get it. Yeah. I I think they got it. (laughs) Um, So yeah, uh, Heartless Jerk by Day... Uh, empathic, lovable, sensitive, Ross-like nano, uh, <laughs> Cincy and Sawa. And just so you guys know, I'm, a, I'm an empathic nano, mage-like character who crafts illusions. So if you see any opportunities to become maids, just guys, go ahead and shout those out, and I got you covered. Yeah. Beautiful. Maids away. <laughs> um, all right. Go ahead, Jake. Oh, hey. JJ. JJ. The ever-changing right. one. The Abrams. Um <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm Kane, a driven jet, uh, driven Jack. Yeah, who, driven who, jet, who, driven jet, driven. who who consorts with the dead. So I just talk to dead people. They don't always respond. Um, sometimes they're not dead. You know, it just it, 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 it depends. Can, can you talk to somebody who has just recently been scared half to death? I don't know. Okay, that's that's, that's we should. Exp- we'll we'll try that today. Yeah, I feel that. like if they've been scared half to death, you know. 
I can half talk to them. Yeah, or maybe you can like maybe you can just have like a a sixth sense for if they shat themselves when they were scared. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> Because you need a sixth sense and you can <laughs> smell it. Yeah, I, can't, <laughs> I can't smell. Yeah, I have to work up the nerve to say hi first, though. So. Yeah, well, no, because when you die, obviously you expel all of your excrement. Also, this is true. So I you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I don't. But... Tier- Nathan is one that dies regularly. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but in Tearson's case, he can say, "Oh no, this person isn't dead. That's that's living uh, soil." Right. Uh, versus, oh, that's freshly dead. So living poop has a yeah. different smell than dead poop. Hey, it's your character, man. He is a doctor, so he probably he, would, he, know he would know. Right. He would know. Oh, yeah. We're knee, writing the Kane mythology right knee now. Deep Thank in you. It all day. All right. Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. We've been going uh, in, a, listeners, we've been going in a pretty obvious circle. And uh, <laughs> directly next in the circle is kind of. Looking around, who me? Listen, huh? who, me. I looked over to Mark. <laughs> thought he was doing something. I, I was. looked back. Turns out he was. Everyone's <laughs> staring at me. Idiot. This is my nightmare. <laughs> uh, this is Nathan, and I'm playing Tearson. Hi, Tearson. Hi, Tearson. Hi, Tearson. Tearson will intimidate the s out of you. Whoa. Ooh. That was my journal hitting my microphone. I was a beautiful sound. Don't yeah. you dare interrupt. All right, let's, uh, let's clap a few times just for that. Just so we know to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. really liked it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I love it. <laughs> uh, this is Nathan, and I am playing Tearson, who is a intimidating nano who wonders. And it's kind of a weird one. You'll just have to wait and find out if I wonder about stuff and what that does. Just be patient. <laughs> I'm empathic, not patient. <laughs> um, and I'm Mark. I'm playing Grode, who is a mutant nano who constantly evolves. So just imagine like a weird, bald, naked mole rat of a person with a long tail. And so far, you're kind of working with Grode. Mm. I, Im- I imagine that kind of stuff all the time, so it's like really easy to picture that. <laughs> Sounds like something a surfer would say, like, "Yo, bro, yeah, man." Sounds pretty grod. Yeah, grod, <laughs> bro. bro. Yeah, grod. <laughs> oh, I'm watching um, on some grody waves, bro. <laughs> so, as you left off last week in our adventure, you were taken on a tour of the cult of the vortex in their living spaces. What's called the dwelling. Um, you had been, give, you'd been coming up with a plan with um, Ivana, who is the young girl recently kidnapped, or not re- let's say a couple months kidnapped, who was um, Fre- hoping that you would help her free her brother Shom. Would that be freshly kidnapped? Freshly kidnapped. Okay. Um, and you, in the process of figuring out a way to kidnap, or uh, not kidnap, to unkidnap, and therefore <laughs> rescue. <laughs> Um, I like unkidnap. Yeah, unkidnap. <laughs> uh, to rescue Shom, you, in getting to know the cult members, have decided that you are going to shake up the leadership. And the, the route that you have decided to do this is an assassination. How you do this is now the thing that we need to plan. So you are in the dwelling, which, if you remember, is the circular room that you've come to after traversing through part of this vast structure and you're on the bottom floor. Kind of the dormitory? Yeah, it's a circular chamber, and it's two levels, but on the lower level, there's like sliding doors that lead into living chambers. So you are currently in a room with a couple of the cultists that you had met. Um, In front of you, next to you is Ivana. You are meeting with Fan, who is the owner of the journal that you guys found who kept all the excellent notes. You're meeting with Norid, who is one of the um, more more benevolent members here, who for some reason looks extremely similar to Tearson. Um, and you're Bye. also meeting with Savra, who is kind of like a, the matriarch, if you will, of this, um, this group of people. A couple of recaps for the listeners. The Cult of the Vortex has been around for at least 200 years. Um, at different times, they've had at least 200 members. Um, right now, it's like 
maybe 40. So it's kind of in a bleak time, a little bit less successful, a little bit less prominence. Um, and yeah. So how do you guys want to pull off this assassination is what Norid says to Tiersen. Smoke bombs. Well, Norid, you handsome man. Um, <laughs> I am handsome. <clears throat> I got a question. What are the deets on a brassel, this evil leader? What are the deets on his daily routines? Like, if this were to go down, well, um, we I think find... you. I think you guys had mentioned that you were hoping to wait for our next group gathering. Right. So we do do regular meetings in the in the actual vortex temple holy of holies on a weekly basis. So I know you'd hope to wait till then, and that was the initial plan. Do you have any ideas? So uh, Norad, thanks for that um, for that reminder. Um, as thank a, you, as a handsome man who's <laughs> in the presence of another similarly handsome man. Uh. Um, I point to myself and say, myself? Me and Nora and roll our eyes. Yeah, we roll our eyes big time. <laughs> You're going to have to roll some die to see if you take intellect damage from that <laughs> eye roll. I am weak to intellect attacks, so. Yeah, make it happen. <laughs> you got four eyes attacking you right now. Okay, here we go. From two handsome men. I am really smart. Uh, it's like a 21, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a old, it's a good old-fashioned six. Um, you... <laughs> You don't take any damage, but your next intellect task is clouded by your shattered sense of pride yeah. and is is one step more difficult. That's perfect because I'm a nano and I hardly use intellect-based attacks. Exactly. That's, that's so great. You're great. So uh, thank you for being insulting to me, Norad, <laughs> for no reason. And I was curious, um, do, you, do you see any potential um, for, uh, for a disguise in this situation? Um, not a maid by any chance, but maybe like dressing up as cultists or um, casting an illusion of something that might distract um, a Brassel's attention, maybe something like cult-related or an image that he might find particularly riveting. Do you have any intel on that? Uh, I would say that the robes are the only thing that might work. We can give you some here, no need for fake ones. He's an extremely intelligent man who sees through a lot so I have, a, I have an inkling that fooling him with an illusion would be very challenging. Noted. How close do you stand to him during this, uh, this here ceremony? Um, I actually can't stand close to him at all because I always carry my knife on me. And as I've, we've mentioned, for whatever reason, he repels metal objects. Because, so. of, because of his status as chosen by the Vortex, or so he says... He actually repels all metal in front of him. Has it been proven? Yes. Okay. All right. Involuntary even? Yes. Hmm. Well, is there any point in the ceremony where there's maybe any crowds gather or, or he has time alone and away? Fan, the more intelligent group member that's present, the one that, again, kept, um, kept all his notes, he sees his notebook peeking out of Tearson's pack and he grabs it. He says, give me back my notebook. <laughs> and then he pushes up his goggles and he says, he says, if you could free yourself of metal, I have a feeling that you could get to a brassel if you could nudge him in the right direction. Ooh, what do you mean by nudge? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Dog barking. Dog barking. <laughs> I mean that a dog barks. <laughs> well, only only a brassel is allowed near the vortex because as the vortex is chosen, he can survive it. But that's something that has yet to be proven. So perhaps nudging him in the right direction at the right moment could prove otherwise. Interesting. So the vortex would kill him, basically? If it's got theorized. It's theorized. We do know that nothing can withstand the intensity of the vortex. And could you describe again what it looks like, this vortex? And is it in a room? It's in the it it's in our source? it's in the holy part of our temple, and it's a mystical swirling of yellow lights. Mm. You'll see it soon enough. 
Fan or or NORAD, is there any possibility of of swaying a Brassel uh, through nonviolence to to relinquish his throne if, if his intentions truly are the benefit of the cult? Um, could he not be convinced that the uh, the most beneficial choice would be to opt for for no violence and just to step down from leadership? He's completely unpersuadable. Dang, he's completely corrupt and would never be swayed on such things. And even if you could get the rest of the people to rise up against him, they fear his powers. Interesting. So the idea that we're coming up with right now <laughs> is that we're, we're going to, like, get him to stand in front of the vortex, and I'm just thinking we, we just shove him, shove him right into the thing, right? And, yeah. then, and then hope that, hope that he doesn't make it out. And ding dong, a witch is dead, kind of, you know? Norad, uh, are there any metal plates or anything that he might be able to manipulate in that throne room scenario that we're talking about? He claims he can manipulate all metal, but I know that, uh, I know that he can't be approached with anything metal. So anything metal that you have on you would have to, you wouldn't be able to be wearing Right under your robes. Word. So, do you do you know of any any places where we could get some supplies or anything non metal that we might be able to use? You could. We have nothing here because he keeps us barely barely fed. But if you were to sneak into his chambers beforehand, you'd have very little time. But you might find something. However, interesting. The best thing would be to store all of your metal somewhere. Mm. Can we keep it with you? Since you uh, keep a dagger, or is it Feyen who keeps a dagger on him, on his person? Uh, it's Norad, Norad, but yeah. May we keep our metal uh, objects with you for the time being? Sure. Okay, I, uh, I undo my dagger and take off uh, half a dozen rings and necklaces. I'm assuming most of your clothes have metal weaved into them too, so you guys should plan on being butt naked. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm all Underneath for that. robes, though. First. Underneath robes. Yeah. If I do, I might intimidate yeah. everyone. So, um, <laughs> so here's the here's the catch. Um, Ivana is kind of chuckling to herself. So is Sabra, the matriarch of the group. Because we just undressed. Or? And you haven't undressed yet. Oh. I'm going to say I mean, you're not undressing in front of these ladies. Um, but uh, Sabra looks at Nord and says, "Are you going to tell them?" And uh, he begrudgingly says. Okay, but he only whispers, he looks at Tearson and whispers that, that uh, all, all the yellow robes have metal weaved into them. Oh, so snap. you'll have to ditch them at the last second before you push him. <laughs> we're oh, doing this new yeah. <laughs> naked tackling. You told me we're going to naked kill this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tease me with a good time. Get over it, you guys. Unless you guys brought a collection of wooden swords with you. With very sharp edges. I'm a nano. I don't need no sword. Norad, uh, would it be possible uh, to mental link with you? Uh, as a nano, I have the ability to link with uh, a willing partner. And potentially you could offer insight or you could take a read on what's happening and offer insight. And then GM, this would be a question to um, like increase our, our attacks on, on uh, a brassel in some way with that added intellect. Um, I don't think you'll find that particularly useful, um, just as like a GM aside. Mm. Um, however, I will say that NORAD uh, would only accept an offer like that from Tearson because of their weird look-alike connection. Interesting. Okay. I quickly change my face with an Jealous. illusion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll stop coming up with ideas. Um, okay, <laughs> I, I, I got a weird idea I might throw at you. Um, Norad, what kind of sway do you have with, um, with this guy? Because I'm thinking, well, I don't know. Um, you're his, you're his right-hand guy, right? Or am I, am I confusing people? Oh, no. Uh, he has no right hand, oh, although Gregor I'm fancies Gregor. himself as his okay. right hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Of course, I don't know what we're going to have to do, what we're going to do about Gregor once we pull this off anyway. He'll probably militantly take over the rest of us. Do we need to kill him, too? 
I think with us around, he might he might see eye to eye, especially if we take a, a bracel down and a and a blaze of glory. We'll see. We'll see though. We can hope. Um. Okay, so so wrapping up this conversation, you guys are about a day away or so from the next gathering. Um, so they shoot you out of their room. They lead you to another empty room from a family that vacated years ago, and you guys are given a chance to rest for the night. Cool. And Grode gets his three points back from stubbing his toe in the previous episode. <laughs> I, I perform a quick intellect attack on uh, Grode. He doesn't know it, and it fails, obviously. You can roll and see if it succeeds. Well, I just want to get the like bad taste out of my mouth, so when I need it. But I, I will roll. Uh, I want a mental link with him just because I'm like really curious about what goes on in his little head. Sure. I remember uh, one. Um, in your attempts, to, in your attempts to mental link with him, you catch fire. Oh, uh, it's, yeah, fair enough. And uh, <laughs> it's not a it's not a huge fire, but you do you will be waking up with three points gone from your might pool and two points from your intellect pool, and in deep need of new underoos. However, you did successfully mental link with him, although oh, heck yeah, his thoughts are terrifying to you <laughs> I, I'm even more uh, scared of him <laughs> they make you lose three intellect every minute no um. okay alright so it's the day of the assassination attempt so um, excited. and we have it marked on a calendar <laughs> it's a big day guys <laughs> big day <laughs> circle it um, and uh, alright so as you guys are uh, getting up and going, you hear sort of like kind of commotion and you exit your room and you see that all of the cultists have donned their robes. You have donned your robes, of course, completely nude underneath. Mm. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, and you all proceed to the upper level of this spiral dwelling chamber um, past all of the control panels that no one really knows how to use, past the ones that people have salvaged. Really quick, though, does Grode have a, a, a full-size robe that he's just kind of swimming in, or yes. did he find a little children's? Cute. No, okay. you are swimming in a full-size robe. Okay. Your, your tail fills it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and you make your way to the elevator. Savra, the matriarch of the group, uh, as I will keep repeating, brandishes her key stick and pushes some buttons on the tip, Sounds inserts funny. it into the depression of the elevator, which opens, and you all enter going downwards. Everyone's um, on board with this. Everyone's <laughs> on board with this. Um, I want that clear. You do it in phases, and then you are, you're with the entire population of this little religious sect, so um, you're seeing lots of people that you have not seen before, of course, because you've only really interacted with a handful of them. Um, but everyone's wearing their robes. It's a solemn occasion, so they're kind of like bowed down. As you pass through the chamber, you do notice a room on your left, and then you notice further ahead, much further ahead, but you can still see it, a very large open space. What do you do? Real quick, are, were we going to get the opportunity to try to sneak into his room? You are walking towards the temple, mm -hmm. open space, and you see a room on the left, what do you do? Okay, well, yeah. um, is that his room? Yes. Okay. We should go. Well, let's do a quick, quick look-see. Yeah. Um, can we sort of wait for the, for the crowd to shuffle past? And It might be. You can. Um, however, you are on a time frame. Mm. So I would, I would potentially recommend... Potentially? Potentially. Uh, is that like a pretentious I, and potential yeah, combined? Yeah, potential and pretentious. <laughs> All so, right. Um, uh, but I would recommend perhaps, um, uh, what am I trying to say? I would, I would recommend perhaps trying to, you know, sneak away yeah. while the crowd is moving so you can move fast. Should we roll to? That's what Grode's going to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so go ahead and go ahead and roll. You can also split up if you choose. Seventeen. Got some good rolls here. Six. Six. Well, eighteen um, for me. 
I kind of trip. I, can't, I don't know if I make it in the room. Yeah, so right now, um, you guys sort of trip up. Yeah, Grode's struggling in the rope. Yeah, so you guys decide to continue on to not, to not further cause suspicion um, mm-hmm. because you don't know really who is loyal to a Brassel and who isn't. It doesn't really sound like a lot of people are, but it's a risk you don't particularly want to take. Grode, hold my hand. Um, oh, yeah, this is you dangerous. guys are holding his hand. Mm-hmm. This is good, though. You did uh, not gracefully, but successfully forged a mental link with Cincian, so that could that could play in handy. Mm-hmm. Um, Keep a lookout, okay, Grode? Yeah. If I'm, you I'm... like pina colada, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I start stop. gagging. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, this. <laughs> and uh, so. We'll come to you guys in just a second. You guys continue into the procession hall. You enter this um, chamber. It's like the holy of holies of the temple. You guys can't see this yet, but since you can mentally link thoughts, I'll allow you to be in mm-hmm. on this description. Um, the room is the holy of holies of the temple. So, okay, so holy of holies of the yeah, temple. Yeah, it's a very large. <laughs> very large. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like after. hearing it like in, in like echo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a very large rectangular chamber. In the center of one of the long walls is um, is a raised circular platform surrounded by complex machinery. There's a vortex of energy that swirls above this platform like a golden whirlpool in the air. It's The radiance, the brilliance, the brightness of it make it very difficult to look at, and the heat is reaching you from far away so you can tell that it's not comfortable to stand near. As you approach closer um, and proceed into the room, um, you begin to feel a sort of um, sort of like religious awe, like you are experiencing something truly special uh, due to just the brilliance and, and otherworldliness of this vortex that you're seeing. Um, yeah, and at that moment, um, at the same time, you guys are back in the Brussels chamber. There wasn't a lock on the door or anything like that, so it wasn't like a struggle to get in. Um, Ivana has actually slipped in with you. And so we've got the split split screen going on right now. Yes, co op. So you guys, you guys are in no screen looking. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys are you guys are in the hour of remembrance, which is the hour before the ceremony begins, mm-hmm. where you just sit and kneel in silence. Um, boring, boring. And uh, you guys are inside of a brassel chamber with Ivana. This is a dimly lit room. Lit room. <laughs> <laughs> dimly lit room. We split up and we have Scooby Doo on the team. <laughs> yeah, it's a disgusting den of iniquity. Um, you can see that this room is unlike every other room because it's like a hoard of luxury and wealth. Clearly, whatever the cult makes money off of or does for profit um, has all just been hoarded to this man's chambers. Um, you'll see you see a lavish bed with padded chairs and couches, a table covered with food and wine, beautiful artwork on the walls, soft carpets on the floor. It's all illuminated by a reddish glow that comes from the low ceiling. Um, hmm. And in the corner is uh, you can see a figure that's kind of tattered, yellow robes, beaten, but also cuffed with synth. And you assume this is Shom. Also, Ivana runs over to him. What do you two gentlemen do? Uh, I I run over with uh, Ivana as well. Okay, Tiersen. Oh, uh, did I oh, I'm sorry, it's me. It's me. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm remembering uh, for now. Well, we don't have any metal, so I should try. We should try to find something to free him. Well, well, yeah. Why don't you? Yeah, go look for. Okay, I'm gonna look for something to free him. So as you search, uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a roll? Good. Um, so at this time, you observe that there's actually no metal in this room whatsoever. Um, I think he could have looked for something that would be useful in breaking the lock, though, right? Well, this is his first obser- obser- observance. Observance. Yeah. It's his um, own hour of remembrance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we're running. There is, there's also in the room that you can see a chest that's got, you know, stuff that you might be able to search through, et cetera. Um, 
But yeah, so um, Ivana is obviously elated to see her brother. She's like, I found these men to come and save you and get us out of here. They're even going to try to take out a Brassel. I don't even care. As soon as you're free, we can go. Um, Hold up. So this guy's just tied up in his bedroom? Yeah. Um, I think I have a way to free um, her brother without using some sort of like blunt object. I have a spell or an esoteric called Disassemble where you rapidly dismantle an object um, into 10 pieces. What type of object does this work on? Uh, Object, just any object. Literally anything. It's Mm -hmm. not limited to like machine objects or things like that. Yeah, I'll actually be able to do something useful, I think. Cool, yeah. Hopefully, pending my role. Um, Okay, so I'm going to apply a couple levels of effort here just because I don't want to screw it up. Seven. Yeah. Um, you um, you are able to dismantle these synth uh, sort of manacles that he's um, tied into, and um, yeah, that was a successful successful venture for you. Right. Phew. Good, so good um, um, so I let them have a moment where they um, I guess sort of embrace each other, and then um, after the tension sort of lapses, I ask um, I ask her brother. Uh, you know, what has the Brussel been doing to you? Um, things that I can't say, but we need to get out of here. Um, are you guys really planning on killing a Brussel? How did you know that? Because uh, Ivana said it to him. Oh, she already she told him? Said it, yeah. oh. do, you, do you know, do you know, does he ever let his guard down? Do you know anything that could help us out? Um, I don't know anything that could help you out, but I definitely have to see this. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, you've, you've been in this room... Um, for some time now, do you have any idea of what we could use in this room to help us defeat him? He, keep, he keeps... Oh, we, um, we got it, we got there's it. a chest over... Th- it's a ceramic bowl that he keeps on the side of his bed that has some stuff in it, some pills and some small packets of powder. Um, you could search through that. I don't know of any weapons in this chamber, though. Okay. He, he views himself as so powerful that he doesn't even keep weapons around for defense. That potential oh. jerk. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll look through the through the bowl, and then I'll I'll do a nod to uh, to Kane to try to crack open that chest. Check maybe the chest. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. Go ahead. So in the bowl, you find uh, a handful of you find lots of pills and packets and things like that. Um, but three of them, most of them are depressants, hallucinogens, drugs, and those kind of things. Things that you don't really want to know what he was using them for. If you know what I mean. Ooh. Um, take them out. But there's a couple ciphers there that you can take. Um, there's we have one that uh, is going to restore some health. One that looks like it might give you some extra speed, and one you're not entirely sure what it'll do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from a from a mechanical standpoint, is that last one that we don't know about? Can we tell if it's um, one of those unstable? Type? These are all consumables, so okay. there's not a lot that you can tell by looking at them. Got just it. Because you're dealing with potions, powders, pills, that kind of thing. So okay, I not, ha- there's not like a an energy about them that really gives you any indication. It's right. only okay. one way to find out. I have an idea of who I want to have what, so I'll I'll divvy that out when 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 we um, meet up with everybody. Well, how many? How many can you can carry? Plenty, right? I so can. I have a cipher bag, so I'm yeah. I'm good to go. Do you want to give JJ one now? Uh, yeah, I I think I might throw him the. Do we have? You're like our beefiest beefcake, aren't you? I guess I'm gonna have to give you the speed. All right, sounds good. I'll take it. All right, I had one. I was I was thinking, Kane, that um, if you had that, it might increase your chances of kind of just doing like a head rush of the into the dude's. Uh, right, right, and then thing. after he dies, I'll try to talk to him. And I think I'm gonna give. I think I'm gonna give the uh, the HP like to. Um, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll to see you. how it plays out once once it all gets there. Oh sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I need a roll for the chest? <laughs> um, no. Oh, uh, actually, yeah. To go ahead and roll for the chest. Eight. It was an eight. All right. Were you willing um, to open it? Did, it remains did, mysteriously it, it locked. locked, right? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, wait, J- Kane, don't you have an ability to open chests? Like, don't you have, like, something that helps you do that? I have to cipher. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought you might have had pick lock or something. 
meanwhile, we're uh, worshiping the vortex. Yeah. Remembering the, 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 the festivities vortex. are. <laughs> we, we love you. That was great. All right. Um, you guys are back to you guys. You guys are heading out of the chamber now. Mm-hmm. Um, you've wrapped up your business there, and um, you're generally aware of what happened. Um, you are at least, and things are things seem to be sort of getting a hole. So, kind of in the center, something that you have noticed actually is that there is a strange four limbed mechanical um, being that's sort of making its way around different control panels and things like that. While the um, worship service is going on? Worship service has not begun, begun yet. Okay. But you see this thing. Um, I see it too. Yeah, you guys you guys will see it soon. Right. And it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, and so it's got four mechanical limbs. It has sort of like a central eye. It kind of looks like, um, you know, almost like a spider, but with more of like a globe body instead of like a... Um, spider sort body. Sort of like a spider body, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Norid uh, leans over to Tearson and says, that's the angel of steel. Um, it's, hmm. its only purpose is to defend the vortex, and it will destroy at any hint of threat. Dang. Um, God, has anyone get... ever attacked the vortex itself? No, but... Uh, but anyone that tries to anyone that tries to get close outside of a brassel mm. um, or anything like that tends to <clears throat> feel its wrath. Looks like that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be I would do you would do best to make your business quick. Okay, so are we point, in the room now? At this point, you guys have made it into the room. Can I? Um, I want to mouth quickly to um, Ivana's brother to hang back so as not to raise suspicion if uh, a brassel sees him out of his chamber, because he sure. said he wanted to witness it, but I don't want him to be to be seen. You can't know. mental link with him too, can you? I would have to. I would have yep, to. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sorry. What did you want to do? I just want to tell him to to not be seen because he's super curious about us fighting a brassel. And I don't want a brassel to see him and then tip him off that something's going on. Wait, wait. Who do you want to do this to? No. I want to tell Ivana's brother. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. He Sorry. was just asking if I should mention him. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, then he can stay in there and watch. The Sorry, I missed the part where we said Ivana's brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to tell him that. I do have a, a little plan I wanted to talk to Norit about. And this is maybe a backup plan for whatever we want to do. But Well, are we, we all met up? At this point? Yeah, so... Well, Norad is um, with us. Yeah, but you guys have been kneeling, and Norad's next to you, but okay. the ceremony is actually beginning now. So oh. you guys have filed into the back with Ivana. Shom is, has covered himself more so than normal. Um, I mean, he's, like, especially kneeled down and, and disguised himself in the crowd. Cool. Um, Norad's Shom, or whatever I said. Yeah, Shom. Uh, yeah. Um, and uh, you see... An, extremely tall seven foot tall man sort of take the stage and he looks he's got kind of that like you know jafar sort of mustache goatee combo he's wearing the same robes but his are much better kempt um and his are of a slightly different make obviously because he can't wear the metal infused robes that you guys wear and uh he greets everyone in the audience and then he says before we begin are there any grievances and at this point um a woman a robed woman stands up and points to tearson and says that man right there two weeks ago he stole my purse (laughs) jeez (laughs) and uh so tearson now that I've intruded upon you, you have two points of experience awarded to you. However, you must give one away and come up with a solution to this problem. Nice. Um, why did she say this? <laughs> Fess uh, up. I know it was Sim. And then Abrasso says, do you know this is true? Uh, I stand up and I explain that I am new here. Uh, 
Miss, you can search me for this purse, but I just came here today, and, um... He hides it in his room! Lady, I don't even have a room. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you bringing into the, into the fray? I, I'm realizing in my head that it's possible Norad stole yeah. it, but I don't want to rat my boy out. Remember, you have to award someone, another player here in XP, oh, and yeah. then drag them so, into this situation as part of the resolution. I go to my, my main little bro over here, Grode, um, and I ask him, like, for advice. I got <laughs> you, bro. How do we get out of this? It, you're looking at the wrong guy. Check out this man right here to my other side. And I'm pointing at Norid. <laughs> and I'm just, like, hitting my palm. <laughs> <laughs> See my head. That's I think you. I think. Man. I think... Nord, you, Nord, you go field this one, buddy. While we, while we get our show on the road, you deal with this lady, and we'll, we'll keep the rest of the thing on the program, okay? Nord, is this another one of your funny jokes that you play? <laughs> Russell says. <laughs> but he's looking at you. Oh, uh, do they not see Nord? So they they see they they don't he's not he's, he's not, not responding to you guys okay. like he's kneeled down okay. he'll switch uh, I I quickly <laughs> sense the opportunity and I cast a major illusion on everyone in the crowd to look like Norad <laughs> for real This will cause very before you do this this will <laughs> very much disrupt the illusion of just oh, being boy. innocent people uh, You I know think, what I'm going to do I think here. we're cool with that <laughs> Okay uh, <laughs> I stop him and I say, uh, you know what happened is I think I remember taking the wrong bag one day and I was looking for the owner and I just couldn't find you. Yeah, he was looking to try to give this back all week. Yeah, I can give that to you later after the ceremony. All right, let's have you roll to convince. Uh, I'm going to apply some this. effort. Uh, one level. 19. Ooh, 19. Ooh. Choice. Plus extra damage, please. <laughs> <laughs> she says, well, I do leave my bag lots of places all the time. Perhaps you're just being a gentleman. I'll follow you to your chambers later to pick up my bag. <laughs> I wink at her. So can we keep praying now or what, lady? <laughs> <laughs> Friends, newcomers, <laughs> welcome to the Vortex. <laughs> He begins the religious service. Yo, be uh, quick. Do you really want to cast an illusion on everyone right now? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a quick uh, mouth to uh, goad, groad through my mental link and what say, the? what do you think about that idea? It would definitely create a diversion, and this service sucks. Keep that, keep that card in your back pocket just in case. Okay. In case we need to get out. Because I lean down to Norad and I go, you owe me. And I think what would be cool is if he creates the distraction later and then like I show up and he thinks I'm Norad and then Norad shows up over in the other corner and he looks that way and that's when we can make our move to try and push kick this guy which I have a move called far step and I can well, leap long range in case that's helpful any of any of these I don't think any of these conversations need to happen in real time though yeah so. you guys don't really have time to converse right now oh, because you're in talking. the middle of like a church service so. okay yeah I thought we could whisper. Uh, was, you, can whis you can whisper to only him, but you guys can't whisper. I was talking can, to him, yeah. Does, yeah, with Mental Link, is it, can you actually talk to each other, or can you just kind of read each other's thoughts? Uh, it's two-way telepathic communication. Okay, that's, oh, the, yeah, so that's only great. Grode so you guys can, can talk to each other. Um, okay. Well, maybe I can just be like, hey, Grode, Mental Link that plan and see what they think. Yeah, I like you mouth into him, though. You owe me. You owe me. Um... So he, uh, Abrassel leads whatever you guys are deciding. You guys figure that out. Abrassel continues, says, like, now we begin the induction of worship. And he leads everyone in a ceremonial chant that goes on. Uh, you guys do not know it. So he sent, at about a minute in, he goes, hmm, what is this? I sense a discord. And he's looking... Who here does not know the ceremonial chant? Mm, we all point at Dave. I definitely <laughs> do know it, Abrasol. I love it. Interesting. I'm a new guy. This is very unorthodox. Guards, seize them. And so 
a group of people rise up. You guys have blown your cover. So you have, they're kind of on the opposite end of these 40 people. You have one turn to do something right now. Otherwise, it's probably going to be a fight. Okay. okay. Are, are we, are can we, I, can I do, can I do combat ruse while Nathan does flying leap thing? Well, wait, wait, wait a second. Before this blows I up. Got, I got it. Yeah. Um, are, are we being escorted out of the room? You, they're you, heading towards, towards us. They're heading towards you right now. Okay. I, I go with them. Well, wait, wait, wait. I, Seems counterproductive. I don't. I don't no. no I, I, I kind of like I throw myself on the ground okay. quickly and I say, Abrazo, we, we thought we knew the chant because we had heard the call of the vortex and we thought we knew it. We were, we were mistaken and we, we come here to learn the chant and there's no need for guards. There's no convincing this man. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, okay. I think... We'll, 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 Should make our move right, now. We'll go. We'll go peacefully. All we'll right, go with the doing? guards. Why are we? Oh, just do all, that? all of us, or, or this, just, is our, this is our chance, right? <laughs> I'm not going with the guards. Yeah, let's make our move yeah, and, and kill I, the wrestle. What if? Can I do combat ruse and then someone what is else? Combat ruse. It's where I, I fake the opponent out and distract them. You could try. Yeah, go okay. for it and roll. <clears throat> oh dang it. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not a. It doesn't distract them, but they do. They do seize you first. Okay. Jason, it's your turn. Right. Oh, they're select- why, are, why are they getting us all when I, only two uh, of us stood up? I, I nudge Norad next to me, and I go, time to live up to your favor. And I tell him to start running to the left side of the room. Okay, roll to convince him. Uh, I'm apply effort. 17. Okay. He, he, says, he says, if I don't see you again, my beautiful friend. <laughs> 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 I know I will, though. And we lock arms. And you... Are confused for you wonder about his inc- incorrect grammatical sentence just now, <laughs> and then he runs. So now you have a window where you're not being hunted by guards, mm-hmm. where you could foreseeably get to a brassel really fast if you awesome. made a good roll. All right, I'm so gonna, can I toss him the speed? Oh no, I gave the speed to you. Never mind. Can I toss? Wait, no, I'm in cuffs. I can't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do this the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I toss him the cipher that I don't know what it does, but I wink at him and say it, it's, it'll, it'll be good. Should I roll to catch this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. GM is overwhelmed let, let, by let's all it, of our Let's ideas. hit pause, and, and, it's, and okay, let's recite what's going on in this scene right now. So we're in froze, You guys blew froze, your cover. Frozen time. Mm-hmm. By yeah. okay. just... Gr- Grode, blowing it. Grode's going peacefully. <laughs> Do you, you, yeah, guards haven't reached you yet, though. Yeah. But he's gar- running you, to the You guards. just decided to run to the guards, <laughs> is what you're saying. No, no, Grode's, Grode's, got his, Grode's got his little hands up in the air and okay. he's waving his fingers Cute. like, I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm totally fine. Yeah, I don't know the words, so what? But they're repulsed by Okay, and, and everybody else <laughs> is, uh, so we've got. I'm in cuffs. Kane okay. is in cuffs. Kane's yeah. in cuffs. He's in cuffs. I'm tossing the cipher to um, Tiersen. Which cipher? The one, the miscellaneous. <laughs> okay. I'm scared of this one. <laughs> you don't know it's Ruin miscellaneous. Everything. You don't know that it's miscellaneous. Gulp. Is, is this something you swallow? You, you eat it? It's consumable. Yes, it's a consumable. Oh, boy. And you you don't have yourself. to take it, but I'm giving it to you. Okay, so why don't, why don't you roll to see if you toss it successfully? Okay, I'm going to apply effort to this. I would say this is a speed task. All right. Okay, nine with effort. Nine with effort. Okay, so you have successfully thrown these tiny pills to Nathan or to Tiersen. Okay, Tiersen, it's your turn now. What are you doing? Are, are those multiple ciphers or is it? It's one. one. Yeah. It's okay. Like collect- they're like so. I, color. I caught them. Yeah. I have a few seconds here to try and perceive what they can do. I'm gonna try. Yeah. You, is that okay? Sure. He can wonder. And I'm skilled in perception and Numenera. I don't mm. know if that helps. 19. Yeah. <laughs> you can see that these look like sleeping pills. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have been the best. <laughs> I throw them back at Cincinnati as hard as I can. Well, I didn't know what they did. And I'll take the extra damage on that. Okay, what are you now, doing? Um, I'm going to just go for this, and I'm going to use Far Step, which is a leap long range move. And I'm going to wait for norad to get maximum distraction okay and in fact i'll even point over at norad and be like there's a double in here seize him 
Okay. To cause this confusion. Like, sure. why is this guy look the same? That works. They're chasing, they're, and then they're going that way. And then I'm going to leap. So. Lots of commotion. You're going to leap. Yeah. Straight at a brassel. And I'm going to add um, three levels of intellect effort. And Far step's yeah. an intellect move? It is. Mm-hmm. It's like a sm- small teleport. It's weird. Okay. And you're remembering to take your robes completely off. Nope. Yes, I nope. am. <laughs> nope. That's a lot of turns, yes, the... things in one turn. <laughs> Checking the pills, throwing them back at me, jumping. I yell, seize him to Norad. They all look at Norad, and I take off my robe, and I leap. <laughs> 17. Oh, these all good right. rolls. You, you immediately leap into, um, and since you immediately side, uh, far step or whatever, into a brassel, naked, into this tall... <laughs> Seven foot tall Jafar of a man. Yes. And he is confused and taken aback and falls behind himself into the vortex where he is immediately incinerated. Um, That's it? Yes. That's what I say. And I yell, this is vortex. (laughs) (laughs) Um, However... Seizing the opportunity, Gregor, who is leading the guards, decides to take over, and now a fight's breaking out. Oh, shoot. You guys don't have weapons. However, um, Ivana and Fan have retrieved your equipment Hmm. and have brought it to you. However, you are all scattered about the room. Scattered. And there are a couple, there's three different combatants here for you to face. Um, Okay, Arcane and I still in cuffs. Or the guards are. Honest. I don't think the guards really ever got to you because, um, but Kane is in cuffs. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get a little initiative roll. Let's do it for battle. Six, seven, ten. Ten. I'm in cuffs, right? I can't. You, you, you should still, you should roll. still okay. roll. So you can still do actions. Fourteen. If you're tired of sifting through flea markets for rare and unique games, we can help. Retro City Games in Henderson, Nevada, only five minutes from the Las Vegas Strip, has all your favorite gaming staples, classics, and a wide selection of rare games with new stuff always appearing on our shelves. Come in and chat with Nicole or Doug about your love of games and watch as they help you complete your collection or find your childhood favorite. And don't forget, Retro City Games loves trade-ins. So if you have any Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, PlayStation, or even PC games, come in and visit Retro City Games today. Welcome to the new metropolis of gaming, Retro City Games. So we have, we're in our rectangular room. You guys are all away from the platform that the Vortex is on. The Angel of Steel is still working on its machinery. You haven't angered it in any way. Um, But there is a commotion going on. Um, So the guards, consisting of three guards, you have Gregor, and you have two with him that you haven't met, one wielding a sword and one wielding an axe. Um, And uh, you, they are kind of huddled around Cain, who they had cuffed. And then you have Tiersen near the platform of the Vortex. You have Cincian in the back, and you have Grode also in the back. And then you have Fane and Ivana with your equipment um, far off to the side where the entrance to the room was. So it's Kane's turn. Obviously, you are cuffed, but you can, you can try to do something. Yeah. Well, let me see what I got here. Um, I swear I did not see you fill my cup with some beer. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> Cypher. Try consorting with a brassel. It's a player intrusion. Can I try to knock them down and take the keys? You can try. Okay, I'm going to roll for that. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Where's that like roll been my boy. whole life? <laughs> no effort, just rolls 20s. You knock them, you succeed... You knock them so hard, one of them trips into the vortex and is immediately incinerated. <laughs> yes. Not Gregor? Not Gregor. And I look to the gang. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I go, damn. <laughs> Was it the axe man or the sword man? The axe man. I always Grode give myself a, an axe man. Grode gives <laughs> a thumbs up, another thumbs up, and then he kind of curls his tail to kind of look like a thumbs up. <laughs> Triple thumbs. You're still Triple cuffed, pulse. but you got the key. Okay. Cool. Okay. Who's, what's the... It's Gregor's turn. So he... 
he is going to attempt to kill Tearson because he's leaving the he's leaving his other henchmen with you. And he's gonna attempt to attack Tearson. So go ahead and make a roll. Um, can I add effort to a defense roll? Sure. Is that speed? Yes. Cool. Twenty. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> We're, you, we're good tonight. <laughs> you, uh, he goes straight for you, and because of your the angle you're facing, you do a little sidestep, and he flies right into the vortex <laughs> and is <laughs> immediately incinerated. And I say, I said this is vortex. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so who is that, Gregor? It's Gregor. Oh, oh man, big, that would have been the immediate the, successor. The big bad is the most. Well, Russell was the big bad, but the other big ish. All right. Yeah, Grode, it's now your turn. Grode looks around to see if is somebody else want a piece of this action. <laughs> All right, Grode waits. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, so, so there's one other guard, and and the uh, the steel angel hasn't done anything yet. Uh, not yet. No. It doesn't care how many bodies are getting flown into it. They're di- they're dissolving. Yeah. Humans um, are worthless. All right. Um, Grode's gonna run. Run, uh, uh, how how close is the other guard from where Grode's at? Um, he's pretty far where away I'm from at. you. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Grode Grode will start. Well, yeah, I think Grode will start just moving towards him. All right. It's his turn, and he returns moving towards you, um, and he attacks you. And it doesn't do any damage, but you're actually knocked prone by his attack. So the fo- uh, this guy with the... Did I say the axe or the sword guy dies? Axe guy died. Right. Mm-hmm. He got the sword. He's going to press his advantage, and it's going to require an action for you next turn to get up without being immediately attacked, uh, or to survive not being immediately attacked. You're going to okay. get two experience right now, mm. uh, and how are you going to get out of this um let's see who, who would be near me at this point then um, um the closest to you would be Cincian. you can communicate with him too right he yeah can. um I, i'll say let's see um don't overthink these simple intrusions. yeah i mean just like grode grode will say like keep an eye on keep an eye on the steel angel i i got this Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> so, so this guard is like pressed up against Grode right now while Grode's prone on the floor? Yeah, and okay. you've given an experience to Cincian, so you have one experience. Right. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to look at this. As, is it my turn? Um, it's actually Tearson's turn. Okay. All right, um, we just have one enemy left. Yeah. And he's going to attack uh, Grode. Yes. All right. I, uh, I'm going to do a, an old remedy I've done before called far step. <laughs> I, uh, show favorite when I get nude, I like to jump and kick dudes. So I'm going to try to far step leap long range. Cause I'm pretty far from them. Right. Right. I can't reach them. Well, no, his, this guard is closer to me to him. It's not too far. From oh, you. so I could like shoot onslaught or something at him. Yeah. You could hit him. With okay. Onslaught. Maybe I don't need to leap. Um, let's do onslaught, and I'm gonna go for the two mental damage that it does. Isn't that right? Two damage. Mm-hmm. Two mental damage. Yeah. Sixteen. All right. Yeah. So you do you do two damage to him, and I make it in the form of my nude body, and it shoots at him. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that part of the wonder? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder what I'll do. <laughs> okay. All right. It's now um now it's your turn, Cincian. Okay. So um was that did that in any way um the attack by Tearson did that change anything to Grode's situation or is he still kind of in immediate danger from um, from my point of view? He's still he's still in immediate danger. Okay. All right. Um I'm going to look at this as a opportunity to overcome my repulsion for Grode. So um, I'm, I would normally have listened to him implicitly and just say, okay, if you, if you got it, you got it. But yeah. I'm not going to. I'm going to um, shock the system 
of this uh, dude, the swordman. And uh, this move is flood the mind of a... Oh, actually, how? what range am I in? Because this is a short range attack. Yeah, I don't think you are actually in range. Okay. Grode's taking a free action also to say, I got this. <laughs> Okay, I will. Yeah. <laughs> while you're while, not, you're, while you're, you're hearing, I got this. Short range. Okay, all right then. Well, I will just uh, forfeit my turn because it sounds like Grode's got this. All right, sounds good. Um, all right, Kane, it's your turn. Can I t- unlock the handcuffs and use my spear, or do I have to do one you at can, a time? You can do one, yeah. Okay, well, I guess I have to unlock my myself. The roll. You actually, I'm sorry, you don't need to roll. You got the key, so you're yeah, good. Okay. All right, you've unlocked yourself. Okay. Uh, Grode, it's your turn. All right. Um, so Grode, underneath the weight of this guard that's there, takes a deep breath and starts to liquefy. <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> and he turns. So I'm using my amorphous body. Um, where I transform into an amorphous puddle of goo <laughs> and um, using that to kind of Alex Max, Alex Mack my way out from underneath the guard's uh, pressure. That damn All right. lizard. <laughs> you can go ahead and roll. All right. I'm just barfing constantly. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a might roll. I'm going to add uh, one point in, in uh, one, one asset. One, uh, not asset. What's the word? Effort. Oh, effort. Three. So that's that's only a six. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, <laughs> you you rolled a six. I rolled a three, and then plus the effort is a six. Okay, so um, you can pick. You either only partially succeed, or you fully succeed, but you take four damage. You fell down a drain. I'll, I'll, I'll fully, fully succeed. All right, but you take four damage. Okay, I've got plus two armor. Great. So two damage, ten. Are we wearing armor, or is it like your skin? That's when I when I get puddleish, I get um, armor. Oh, interesting. Yeah, great. Okay. So, well, it actually depends what he's attacking with. What's yeah. he attacking me with? Um, he's attacking you with a sword. He hits you before you for fully amorphosize. All right. Let's say that's slashing, so I get plus two armor. Great. Well, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll allow it. Oh, actually, no, Pier- you don't have armor. Piercing or slashing. You guys are all naked right now. So. Yeah, I yep. know, oh, no, that's, that's, oh, that's, right. that's built into my... Yeah. my <laughs> well, only when I turn into a puddle do I gain armor. Yeah. It's weird. Okay, um, <laughs> great. So it is uh, Duranus' turn. Uh, that's the guy with the sword. He didn't get his name. doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> um, and he is going to run after Tiersen and do another attack. So go ahead and roll for defense. <clears throat> Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you dodge successfully, and you do three damage to him in return with your backhand. Nice. Um, yeah. What's that? I don't know. Let's uh, clap a second. You know what? Yeah. It was, this is like crazy sensitive. <clears throat> oh, oh wow. Yeah. Everything is mega sensitive tonight. Yeah. Crazy. Um, Maybe say what happened again. Was it? Yeah. Did he say it? So yeah, you yeah, uh, backhand? you succeeded so well that you backhanded him. Took some extra damage from himself. Um, now we have a situation arising. The Angel of Steel has sensed a threat. So real into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, after I backhanded him, I look down and I go, "I should get naked and fight more often." <laughs> I look at the camera, look at the camera. and say that. <laughs> <laughs> look at the um, With a little eyebrow wiggle. Yeah. A so, Brazel's so, ghost so, tells me yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he <you> should. <laughs> um, okay, so at this point, um, you see the the angel sort of heading towards you guys. He's he's kind of been on you know kind of the far corners of the room doing his thing. Um, so he's not doing anything quite yet, or he's not in an immediate threat to you quite yet. But he is a machine, or it is a machine. So I would be proceed with caution. You know, um, mm-hmm. all right. So um, it is now Tiersen's turn. Did he um, just go? No, Tiersen counterattacked 
The yeah, it was my defense. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah, just backhanded. So just I, backhand. I still have Soldier Boy in front of me, right? You do. Okay. Maybe I'll just keep attacking him, because I don't know what I can do to that bot boy. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to ask the question. Let's get a little creative here. This is a move I can do as a person who wonders, and it's ask a creature a question so insightful they lose their next turn. <laughs> um, do I roll for that, you think? Yeah, are you trying to ask your enemy in front of you? Yeah. Questions I'm, I'm going to basically ask him, <laughs> like, what his future is here since everyone is dead around him and what he's fighting for. Okay. Let's and, hear it. And, uh, I want to hear the actual question. Uh, yo, bozo. <laughs> what are you doing still? All your friends are dead. What's the point of this? 20. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's all I roll. Uh, he, he, is, he looks up and he looks at Savra, and it makes you wonder if they had a relationship at some point in their life. Oh. And he nods his head and he drops his sword. And he walks immediately towards the Angel of Steel, who, with its four limbs, dices him in multiple pieces, <laughs> guts everywhere. The Angel of Steel sweeps it up and tosses it into the vortex, and he's forever incinerated. And a girl that you have seen but haven't actually met, another young girl, comes in and says, Papa! <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I look at the camera and pull on my collar and go, was it something I said? <laughs> your, your imaginary collar, because I think you're still nude. My skin that's around my collar. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that is very sad. With that, the Angel of Steel actually goes back to its business. Oh. It feels the threat has been detained. <laughs> and combat. We have to raise this girl now? <laughs> Out of guilt? <laughs> Dude. Um... And, yeah, um, we're going to take a short break, and we'll reconvene with the aftermath. Mm, nothing's better when grilling your favorite meal than adding some delicious Wheelie Q rubs, seasonings, and gluten-free barbecue sauce. Made with the finest ingredients, Wheelie Q products pack a ton of flavor to your meals, whether it's ribs, chicken, steak, hamburgers, fries, or vegetables. To get your hands on some of these tasty Wheelie Q items, head on over to www.wheelieq.com and a portion of all profits made will go into finding a cure for spinal muscular atrophy. Super BS Gamescast listeners, act now and get 15% off your order today just by entering the promo code POD4. That's P-O-D and the number 4 at checkout. For the tastiest food on the grill, nothing's better than Wheelie Q items today at wheelieq.com. You guys have uh, successfully kind of thwarted the leadership of the Cult of the Vortex. It's a little hectic. You are currently in a conversation with Savra, the matriarch, if you will, of the Cult of the Vortex, the short, stocky, gray-haired woman who's ex-husband you just murdered um <laughs> actually you didn't really murder him you convinced him to murder himself <laughs> yeah um, a little darker way to go <laughs> um and she assures you that he had become an awful man um <laughs> that's good yeah, yeah. me and too then, right Savra? the yeah. daughter still loved him unfortunately <laughs> yeah <laughs> daddy <laughs> um yeah so anyway um she is the one that's actually going to be taking over things now and she believes with some confidence that she can get things back in order. This is about, this is a couple hours later. Of um, course, Grode puts his name in in the voting uh, ballot as well. Too. Yes, <laughs> It's definitely. a Goblet of Fire style voting. Yeah, very, Perfect. very. Um, you guys have recovered your equipment, etc. And I guess the consensus around the crowds is that they don't really understand why Brassel had his like metal deflecting power, but... They're starting to, to doubt his divinity at all, essentially. Um, however. Well, he's dead, though, right? Yes, he's dead. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I should hope that they <laughs> doubt it. Can Cain talk to him, or does it have to be a body? 
It has to be. I think it has to be a body. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's also it's a little late. I mean, they've slept yeah, these yeah, out. Yeah. I have yet to be able to use that skill. I thought you. Yeah, really you'd also yeah. to get close to them. You'd have to approach the vortex, which would be a rough, Just rough thing to do. Um, so anyway, you guys are. Um, you've witnessed some type of like not like a coronation because they don't really have like a ruler. With, there's not. There's no ceremony behind it. But or I guess there's, there. I guess there is a ceremony behind it. But there's no like. It's not like a pop and circumstance. They're not like giving her keys to everything. They're just asking Savra to sort of take over now. There isn't like it's a, a very... ceremonial like key stick with knobs that is given to her. Yeah, knobs instead of buttons. Yeah. Uh, these ones, you twist these ones. <laughs> uh, Everybody consents to her leadership. Yeah, everyone consents to her leadership. Um, so um, you're kind of reaching the end of this ceremony. Everyone leaves the room. You guys are still in the sort of holy of holies vortex room where um, the angel of steel is, etc. And all of a sudden, uh, Tearson falls on the ground and into his mind is injected this bizarre series of sounds. And it freaks him out. And you guys are wondering what's going on. And right as you help him up, he falls down again and hears a completely different version of sounds that are, you know... Like that. It's things that are very strange. And yeah. then you guys help him out again. And then a third time, uh, in your language, you hear inside of your head, the wall is gone. Whoa. Do they, they don't hear this. It's in my head. This is in your head. But you can communicate it to them. I'm hearing a voice in my head saying, the wall is gone. Immediately at that moment, you hear another phrase... The invitation is open. Ooh, the invitation is open. Does anyone know what this means? Uh, what's her name? Shoot. Ivana? Uh, I know what you're talking yeah, the about. Matriarch. They have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Um, give me one second here to catch my... Tirson, you've explained this to us, though, correct? What you heard? Yeah, I heard these noises, and then in my language, I heard that um the wall is broken the invitation what was it <laughs> now kane hears something that says if you come to where i am any wish can be granted Ooh, guys, do, I, do i tell them what i heard yes guys what if this means that we can now or at least you two can now enter the vortex unscathed Ooh, that could be it and lastly a third communication pops through to Cincian that says, but you must dress for the party. Mate. Oh. Guys. He- I'm still nude, by the way. <laughs> so I, ironically, I say, <laughs> it says we must dress for the party. You guys are fully party. clothed. Um, Grote is closing his eyes and, and putting his hands against his forehead, trying to trying to hear voices in his head. <laughs> um, a, moment, a moment later, the last, but you must dress for the party is echoed in everyone's head. Mm. Yes. Um, now, you guys are strangely, you feel a sense of purpose and know exactly where to go, even though you don't know where that is forever so, 21 you <laughs> are you going to forever 21 <laughs> um you guys are led away from uh, from the holy of holies past a brassel's chamber up the elevator shaft out of the dwelling place back into the nave the corridor area with all of the dark rooms that you decided not to explore earlier past one and you see into another cornered angled hallway that all of you instinctively know to walk through for some reason hmm. and in and you come to the end of it and a door opens for you and inside you see a very oddly shaped room um somewhat like kind of like it looks like it looks narrow except there's walls jutting out in the center off to the side so it's almost a cross shape perhaps um and as you uh and you guys are at the doorway here. What do you guys want to do? Now you felt called to this place yeah. and immediately knew the directions to here. Um, Grode's willing to just stroll through. Okay, as you yeah. walk through, as Grode walks through, um, you guys are all walking through? 
Sure. Sure. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Is Sabre Sabra with us or anybody? No. It's just us no one, it's just, just guys. It's just you guys cool. now. Um, the cult. This doesn't the cultists don't hear these voices. They have no idea what you're talking about. We're like we're hearing nor voices. Are they, Bye. <laughs> nor are they uh, interested in whatever might be in this structure that they're not aware of. Um, okay, so everyone, go ahead and roll. Well, that's not a twenty. <laughs> Three for for Kane. Nine. Six. Fourteen. All right. So. Uh, Cincian, you, uh, you, as immediately as you walk in the room, all of you actually noticed, um, so immediately on your left and right, there's these sort of golden tripods. They don't really catch your eye. What really catches your eye is just ahead, you see these crystalline structures about the size of you guys, like, you know, a man's height or whatever. Um, not a mutant's height, Grode, sorry. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> Cincian, you experience a painful and powerful molecular rearrangement, and you are experiencing the worst pain you have ever felt for a full minute, and you are completely unable to do anything about this. The worst pain he's ever felt in the last minute? <laughs> in his I entire life. A lot of for pain. a whole minute. Yeah. <laughs> and not only because you're so empathic, this is not only physical pain, but it is emotional pain. Um, however, after a minute, it stops... And you know you're afraid of what might have changed. However, everyone notices that you are three inches taller. Oh, I do a quick uh, peck check as well. <laughs> <laughs> Still there. Phew. Um, <laughs> but everyone, did everyone witness my molecular rearrangement? Yes, everyone is. However, at the same time, um, a small animal appears, and it's. You're seeing it literally be created molecule by molecule by these crystal statues. And it looks like a hairy bird, but it's about the size of a chicken. However, it has four cat-like legs. It's got striped black hair and orange hair. And it comes up to Tearson and licks him with this really long, weird tongue. And then it immediately wanders off. Cute. Like down the hall? Yeah. Out of, out of sight? Yeah. Can we keep him? Uh, <laughs> try. I wonder what um, that was. <laughs> um, Grode, you are have all of a sudden immediately gained the ability to speak a new language. However, in your mind, processing this new language, you're trying to utter it out loud, and it's such a very it's such a weird language that it's actually physically painful for you to speak. Um, and not only that the vocabulary that you're learning to, for things, you actually can't even really understand. So I, I, can, oh. I can kind of kind of hear it, sort of, no way I can articulate it to other people. You could try, but it's painful. Yeah. You, you've basically taken three years of Spanish in high school. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. It's yeah. kind of there, kind of not. <laughs> yes. Um, all right, let me just make a little... Last minute decision here. Don't, don't, don't they start Biblio? <laughs> what is this? Uh, the only language from our world that survived <laughs> was Spanish. Kane, uh, a liquid begins to condense all over your body, and you are now completely coated in an orange syrupy mixture. And it gets in your lips. It's bitter, but you're not dead, so it's clearly not poisonous. However, trying to wipe it off is not very successful, um, and it seems to just make you sticky and gummy when you try to wipe it off. You uh, reach into your sack for some water. <laughs> reach wow. into your pack for some water, <laughs> and it just seems to repel off the liquid that you are currently covered in. Um, the water does? Yeah. So as you guys are assessing all of this, uh, a couple other things about this room that you notice. So... Past the crystals is a is like a ramp up a platform, and you can see kind of like a circular raised part at the end of the platform, um, and that's about all you can make out thus far. What do you guys want to do? Can we approach the golden tripods? Yeah, uh, I'd like to approach the one on the right and see um, if it looks like I can decipher anything or I can interact with it in some way. There is nothing that you can particularly decipher here. Um, 
you can you can attempt to roll, but it's a level eight. Oh, baby. Um, I'm assuming an intellect test. Yeah, test. and I, I, I will tell you now that it won't really give you particularly valuable information, even if you understand it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time. Thanks then. So we we got the tripods and this platform in this room. The tripods, then the crystals. The crystals on the other on either sides of the no, they're just like crystals. Hmm. And then then you have the ramp up the platform. Okay. In the back, you can make it's a pretty big room. Mm-hmm. Um, the platform goes up about twenty five feet, and uh, the ceiling of the room is twice that. Okay. Um, uh, Grode's Grode's kind of naturally curious, so he's gonna start making his way up the platform. All right. What do you guys want to do? Follow. Yeah, hey, I should follow. The crystals are just chilling. On yeah. The sides. After all of that, you're not experiencing anything else. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll follow. Um, great. So as you're on the platform, you all notice a strange tingling sensation in your feet, and you hear what sounds like distant screams and screeches and other ugly noises. Um, Grode wants to back off of the platform. <laughs> um, now, <clears throat> sorry. Um, as you begin walking on the platforms, uh, you hear sort of a sound in the back and um, you guys turn around and you notice that the tripods are beginning to exude long crystalline growths that quickly form a circular lattice, almost like a uh, round snowflake. It's about four feet across and they fly immediately after you guys and make these spinning attacks at you. Um, so... It's time to roll for initiative. What did everyone roll? Three. Fourteen. Three. Seventeen. Great. Okay. So, um, now, uh, first thing, now you guys have to make a intellect defense roll. These are harder for me. For reals, though. Ten. Ten. Two. Seven. Ten. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> um, okay. So at this point in time, you guys have noticed that um, your thoughts are not your own and that you begin to fight each other. Whoa. <laughs> so... The snowflakes uh, aren't really doing anything now. However, they seem to have taken control of you guys. Um, so, again, um, yeah, go ahead and We did roll. initiative roll, right? Yeah. So, Kane, go ahead and make an attack roll. 14. 14. And uh, Tiersen, make a defense roll. 20. <laughs> His dice are loaded. Didn't you see my moves earlier, boy? <laughs> um, okay, so you, uh, you are able to break free from the control of this snowflake. Okay. Um, however, your dodged attack is so... Um, your dodged t- counterattack is so powerful that it knocks uh, Kane all the way to the dais at the end of this platform. And he falls over on top of it. This is the round protrudence at the other end of the platform. Mm. Um, so, um, tier, uh, I'm sorry, Grode, go ahead and make an attack roll. Okay. 13. All right, Cincian, make a defense roll. With pleasure. Ooh. 15. Okay. Um, Grode aims for an attack at Cincian. However, instead... His uh, arm catches fire, and <laughs> he takes three points of damage. How does it feel? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cincian, make an attack roll. Okay. Fifteen. Tiersen, make a defense roll. Mm. Oh, two. <laughs> <laughs> Part of a 20. Out of zero. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Cincian... 
bludgeons you with his fist. <laughs> uh, so barbaric. Such a nano thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and while he's doing it, uh, Cincian describes his grandest illusion of all. However, because his perception is not his own, he doesn't realize that he's just swinging a fist at you. In his mind, he thinks he's got this whole setup. There's uh, a bunch of maids. NORADs are involved, too. Yeah, there's two NORADs. Um, There's all these things happening. But, you know, it's like he's seen it in this fantasy world of his, but then when you look, it's just him drunkenly swinging and punching. Um, Do I do any damage to Tirson? Yeah, you do three damage to him. And I have one armor plus ward, which is a shield of energy at all times, plus one armor. So I'm going to (laughs) say... The level one power sword is... I'm going to say your your intellect attack armor doesn't do anything to uh, just a fist. A fist so between I friends. Take two damage, I think yeah. is ward just normal damage or armor? It is, except for right now. Okay, where I've decided I'm it's pretty not. freaking strong. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ow, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> um, Kane, go ahead and roll. I'm, I'm not. Am I knocked out or am I? You're not knocked out, but you've fallen on top of this dais. Okay. Ex Monica. Uh, eight. Okay, so beyond the dais, there oh, you God. see on the far wall. Monica. There's these. God is Monica. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. What did you say? God is Monica. So Deus, Deus ex Monica. Monica. <laughs> God is the Monica. God is the Monica. Uh, actually, God in Monica because it's Deus. In. Yeah, God in the machine. That's perfect. God harms Monica. Harms Monica. <laughs> oh. Harmonica. Yeah. That's where um, the harmonica's from. That's where it comes from. <laughs> that's where they come from. Friends. Um, all right. So you have failed your most recent defense roll, Kane. And at the far end of this room, there is a pair of mechanical arms protruding from the wall. They notice, seemingly notice, obviously they're just arms that you've landed on this dais. And they immediately grab you, and they pull you down into below, 25 feet below this platform. There is a glowing pool, uh, and you are immediately pulled under into this water. Um, This terrifies you guys, of course. And now it is Tyrson's turn. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to run up to look down this hole. Okay. And what, I don't know what I see there. I see him. At so the since you've run up, the only way to clearly see the pool is on the dais. So I'm going to need you to make a roll. Ooh. 20. Three. All right. You are immediately seized by the same mechanical arms they pull you into this Whoa. liquid pool. Come on in, the water's warm. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, did seeing that harrowing event kind of snap us out of our stupor, the snowflake stupor? Um, actually, no. However, um, but what do you want to do? Is it my turn? Yes. Um, I have control to to run over to it. You I can, take it. You can. Okay. Uh, I would like to run over to it as well. Um, I guess stand up on the... Actually, no. I would like to cast an illusion of myself on the dais to hopefully convince the arms, basically to buy myself a second look, just in case so I can look down there sure. without being grabbed. And my illusion is uh, three inches taller than the three inches taller version of myself. Sure. <laughs> He's really tall. 13. As you cast your illusion, you immediately feel immersed in liquid, which is strange because... With your perception, you were so sure that you were casting an illusion. However, because your perception was has been taken over, you actually just dove straight into this pool of liquid. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Typical sense and so on. what would you like to do? Um, well, jump, I want to try to... Jump, jump, try to, jump, <laughs> jump. I want to try to get out of this, this stupor, so I guess I... Can I roll, like, intelligence against yeah. this madness? All right. I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna apply two levels of effort for this. Oh no, I'm a, I'm a level one. One level of effort against this. That's 
three, so it's a six. Uh, in your attempts to think, you also all of a sudden feel a sudden onset of liquid um, because while you saw yourself mentally trying to get out of control, you were actually just waltzing towards the dais yourself. <laughs> we're all peeing in our pants when, yeah. when this happens, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. An onset of liquid? Yeah, an onset of liquid. Um, okay, so you guys I'm all... I'm not wearing pants, so... <laughs> Is there a plot twist where we all took the sleeping pills and we're going to wake up with our pants wet? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so all of you emerge from this liquid pool that's filled with a strange comp- compound of what you could only think of to describe as like smart molecules. You've all been fully immersed, so you emerge with a like a sheath of complex metallic and ceramic armor around you. Oh, um, yes. All of you are entirely encased and... All of your armor that you're currently wearing is completely superseded by this armor. Um, however, yeah. So um, as as you come out, the armor that you are all now wearing emits a high frequency sound as it forms, and it puts directly the image of the vortex in all of your minds. And where are we again? So are we You're st- just right outside the pool. Oh. Okay. Is there, yeah, <clears throat> what's the surroundings looking like? Is there like a stairway back up out of this zone? Or? Yeah, this is, so the way it works is there's a central platform to this room that you've been in. So the pool is, is down below that, but the platform doesn't take up the whole room. Gotcha. It's like in the center, so you okay. could easily walk around it. Well, Grode's pretty, pretty bummed out that this ceramic thing's messing up his tropical shirt vibe. <laughs> Oh man, I was. I, you look great. This clashes. <laughs> I'm not into it. You guys all seeing this uh, vortex? Yeah. Yeah. Does it mean we should go back to the vortex? We can go in it with this armor on or something. Hmm. Ooh. Me you, wonders. I'm Me game. Wonders. I'm game if you go first. Let's do <laughs> it. Let's try it. Um. So you are walking back towards the vortex through the path that you already know how to go. You see a handful of cultists around, but they're simply unaware of what's going on and are terrified and run away from you. Um, Ivana comes to thank you for saving her and her brother, but she's kind of like, I thought you guys were cool, but I'm going to leave now. (laughs) We're like Uh, way into this cult now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We're not the hero you want. We're the heroes (laughs) you deserve. (laughs) Are people being, people are being like repelled just by our being there? I would say less repelled and more terrified. Just from something about the way we look in the armor? Yeah. hmm. Yeah. I mean, you look, you are awesome. um, They're laughing with us. So it's not just like (laughs) chest piece. Armor. No, you guys look like this, but without weapons. Oh, can, you, can you describe oh, that to our uh, I was pretty see, awesome. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like layered plated armor with some glowing spots in the middle. You have like tall helmeted heads. Head to toe. Yeah, head to toe. There's kind of like beams of light. Um, weird super Marwind looking. Yeah. Exoskeleton Gro- of... Yeah. Does Grode's tail have armor on it? <laughs> no. Oh. It's completely hidden. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> That'd be dope. Yeah. So it would be dope. You guys head back into the Holy of Holies, uh, and you are led towards the vortex. What does the angel do? When, does he notice us? He doesn't do anything. He goes about his business. Sweeping up guts. We um, attack. What do you guys, <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Are we just gonna guess that we can walk in there? Dude, <laughs> yeah, I'm going in. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like dive into it. Okay, everyone. All right, let's uh, do this. Yeah, grow, grow. yeah, we either all die. <laughs> puts, a, puts a couple fingers in there, kind of like Stargate. Like Stargate, he reaches out his hand and sees if uh, there's any reaction with the vortex area or threshold, I guess, if, if that's a possibility. Uh, no, it's not a possibility. All right. As in we either have to jump in or not? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just feel compelled, and I, I've already dove in. All okay, right. Gro- Grode's climbing up <clears throat> onto the shoulders of, of Tiersen. All right. If, I'm, if you're going, I'm going. All right. I'm going to do one last stand and wonder 
move, which I can ask the GM one question, and that is, if we walk into the vortex, will we die? <laughs> How badass will it be? How badass. Um, you trip GM intrusion now. Oh. Um, you've tripped... And there was a cult member hanging nearby you, and you've tripped into the vortex and have brought him with you. Of course, he is not clothed and dies um, oh, immediately. Snap. Um, it's on your conscience. And a little girl runs out and goes, Papa! <laughs> Papa! That was you my other dad. <laughs> you do not have two dads. So this was a different little girl. <laughs> but I think you get a piece of experience from that. So um, okay. you got to bring oh, someone else. You guys too. all go I through have to the give my experience. He's got to do something. Uh, I mean, I got to give it to my little boy again. He's on my shoulder. That's right. So well, Kane growed. hasn't been tushed yet. Can I throw something at growed. the angel before I jump in? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Will it attack all the cultists while we're gone? Uh, it might. Throw some middle fingers. <laughs> I'm game. I want to do this. Throw it's it. Like a uh, roll. It's like a note that says you're stupid. <laughs> and it's tied around a rock. I got a five. You missed. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. Thank um. <laughs> you. You're stupid. All of the cultists signed. <laughs> beep boop beep beep. You <laughs> must destroy. Detect this disturbance. All right. So all right, I'm gonna, are we? I'm in? jumping in. Yeah, I'm jumping in. Okay, you guys all die. In a new perception. <laughs> as, Whoa! <laughs> oh, I got the heart going. Um, you guys awake in a very different type of structure. It's green, smooth, rounded out corners. Um, and outside, you swear you are looking at the sun. And the same voice in your head says, Welcome to the Citadel of Radiance. Cortana. Um, Real quick, should we stop? Is it almost it's almost ten. Just to be continued. <laughs> it's, it's like lit, the next word out of my mouth was to be continued. So. Oh, oh man, I stepped on the line, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I just uh, my name is Dave, and um, I was I was looking at my law watch and uh, Point, pointing at his wrist clock. I gotta go to bed, guys. I just. I wanted to feel. How about you roll to see if you successfully ended and, the campaign? And for if the watches day. are cool still. I did clap. It just wasn't very loud. Um, fifteen. All right. You just stay up another fifteen minutes. No, no. I will literally lose my job. <laughs> um, all right. That's it for today. So you again, just wrap it up. Yeah. Just Would it be interesting, interesting to hand out uh, experience points at the end of this, or uh, we haven't really reached the end, but you guys have okay. hopefully taken note of your experience points yeah. that you've been given through intrusions. Wait, so all we right. don't get any experience points for like? We can all have one. Uh, promoting the and uh, good news, fans. If you listen to this all the way through, we will be entering your name into a raffle for all the contents of Dave's wallet. So. Stay tuned. <laughs> I hope you like uh, air. <laughs> I don't and care. An old cash. Pokemon card. <laughs> yeah. It's a yogurt line gift card in there. A Spyro the Dra What? <laughs> or like three half used like get one get like a meal free cards on the Mexican <laughs> restaurant. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. Please uh, rate and review the podcast. Subscribe to us. Remember, one million subscribers gets uh, Croc Mythology, the book made. <laughs> Um, funded 100%. 100% funding. So smash that like button. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And that will also include a, an immediate cancellation of Spyro the Dragon Remaster. So we all want that. Um, amen. Bye. Love you. Bye. Amen. Love you. Bye. Oh, yeah.